Hey guys, Sarah here from Work Life Glue, where we talk about balancing all the things in between work and life and everything in between. And today I'm going to be talking about the 10 drawbacks of being a childcare provider with one bonus um, because I thought of 11. Um, and this video is for anyone who is a childcare provider, so maybe you don't feel so alone because this can be a very isolating profession and sometimes people only talk about the good things. And it's also good for those of you who are maybe on the fence or are in the process of becoming a child care provider so I can share with you some of the downfalls to maybe avoid or to prepare for in case they happen to you. And also this could be beneficial just for parents in general um, to kind of know what some things are that affect a child care provider just so maybe you could be a good teammate with your provider so that they can provide the best care for your child. So let's jump right in. And just to preface, I just want to say that this is kind of a hard video to talk about because, you know, normally you want to talk about all the good things of your job, but I do want to be really transparent about the hard parts. I do love my job. Um, I love almost everything about it, but there are some things that are hard, some of which I've gone through, some of which I haven't, but I've known people who've gone through them. So I just thought this would be a helpful video for you guys. One of the drawbacks of being a child care provider is that your home gets messy and it gets worn out a lot faster. Now that's to be expected, but it is kind of hard working from home. Now it is nice to be in your home, of course, but it is hard if you have a lot of kids maybe breaking things. I've had a chair get broken. I've had various little things get broken, toys, um, you know, paint gets scratched on things, kids color on things, and obviously that's part of the job, but it is kind of a drawback because you do have to replace things more often, clean a lot more often, do a lot more dishes and things like that. Um, and I would say that is overall a negative thing, but it's also to be expected. So in my benefits video, I talked about how there is no commute and how great that can be. But the second drawback that I find with childcare is that you can go a little stir crazy because you don't leave the house. I personally live in Minnesota and so five to six months a year we have really cold snowy winters and sometimes it's just like you really can't leave the house. There's blizzards. Parents might still bring their kids to you but you can't really leave. It's not like you can walk to the park. It can be very isolating and hard to never leave your home and never be, you know, switching from place to place. I am an introvert, but that doesn't mean I don't like to like get out of my house, but it can be kind of hard. So it's important to plan times to get out of your house at night and to really make use of the nice weather to get out, go for walks, be outside and things like that, because it can make you a little crazy. The third drawback of being a child provider is that there's very limited adult interaction. Um, at pickup time, you can often find me like really trying to chat with the parents just because it is hard to not have that interaction throughout the day. I don't go somewhere and have adults around me. Granted, that can be kind of nice, especially if you don't like small talk and stuff like that, but it, it can be kind of hard to just talk to little people all day and hear whining and, you know, talk to two-year-olds who don't have a very vast vocabulary and things like that. It's often a joy to talk to them, but it is hard when you don't have a lot of adult interaction. So it's important to plan ways to get that into your life. Maybe call a friend at the end of the day, go see a friend um, and stuff like that. Really make use of your spouse if you're married and just make sure you're getting some adult interaction because you can get a little nuts just talking to kids all day. A lot of the drawbacks also fit with the benefits. They're kind of like a double-edged sword, I guess you could say. They are a pro, but they also are a con. Um, and one of those is my fourth drawback is that because you are setting your own rules and you are your own boss, you have to set your rules and you have to be your own boss. And that can be kind of hard, um, especially as somebody who really loves to care for people and doesn't like to disappoint people. It can be very hard at times to enforce your policies if somebody's going against them. And it's sometimes hard to tell people that this is a decision I had to make that was best for my group and for my business, and it may not be the best decision for that family. And that can be really, really difficult. I have dealt with that in lots of different ways, from small ways to big ways. Um, and it's important to be professional, and part of being professional is sticking with what you say you're going to do. And so if you have something in your policy you're not going to enforce, don't put it in there. Um, and just make sure you put policies into place that really do matter to you. 
even if you are afraid of maybe, you know, doing something the parents aren't in love with. Like, for example, for a very small example, maybe parents all want to send their kids in flip-flops, but it's driving you crazy. They're breaking, the kids are getting hurt, they're tripping, and so you need to put into place a policy of having only tennis shoes, even in the summer. That can be kind of hard because parents might need to go out and buy new shoes or something like that. But it's just important that you do what you need to do for the safety of your children. That's best for your business and that, you know, sometimes makes your job a little bit easier so you can be the best provider there is. Now, that doesn't mean go make every rule under the sun. You have to be reasonable, obviously. But that is one drawback is having policies and enforcing them and making sure you're staying on top of everything as your own boss. The fifth drawback is that almost every child care provider works some kind of long hours. Rarely do you see a child care provider in their home who is only working 40 hours, and that's because most of the parents are working at least 40 hours, so they need time to drop their child off, commute for their lunch break, and stuff like that. So I personally am open 10 hours a day, and even that is kind of short. A lot of people are open longer. I just knew for me I would burn out quickly if I was open any longer than that. Um, and it can be really hard to plan appointments, run to the bank, things like that, because you're open longer than most businesses. So that can be a drawback as well. And just trying to balance having days off and time off, but not always working and not trying to do all of the business related things that you couldn't get to during business hours on your days off because you sometimes need those to rejuvenate as well. So it's a fine balance because you do work such long hours. The sixth drawback is that often child care providers are not viewed as professionals. They are often called babysitters. Um, people don't always take them seriously. And especially with stuff in the news, um, it can't. it's not always viewed in a positive light. And that can be kind of hard. I mean, I went to school for five years. I'm one class away from my master's. I was a teacher. Um, so I really tried to upsell that um, in my interviews and really come off as a professional from the beginning and say, this is my business. I am not a babysitter. I am a child care professional um, and I have to run my business in that way. But it can be hard for people to stand their ground when they are often viewed in a way that's not always so positive. So that is hard, especially when parents want, you know, certain things, but then they don't view you as a professional. So it's hard balance to make sure they're getting what they want, but making sure that you're getting what you want as a professional and having that um, label because labels are important and it's important to carry yourself and be respected in the community. The seventh drawback to being a child care provider in your home is that you have no regular break during the day. Now granted, I do have nap time during the day. But I'm still 100% responsible for my children during that time. I can't, like, just leave. I can't even go outside. Um, and I have to be checking on them regularly. And if any of them wake up or do anything, like, that's on me to take care of them. So while I do get a, a pseudo break, um, you don't have any time to, like, run to the bank or eat lunch, like, at a restaurant or meet a friend. Um, sometimes it's hard to make phone calls. You're trying to be really quiet during nap time. So that can be hard as well to not have like an official break like a lot of people have in their jobs, but you're still in your home um, and confined to the limitations of nap time and licensing and things like that. The eighth drawback that has been very stressful for me is that your house always has to be ready. No matter what, come Monday, if you're open at 7 a.m. or whenever you open, your house has to be daycare ready. Now licensing here in Minnesota is very strict. Um, people have gotten in trouble for having a bobby pin in the bathroom. Um, you know, you can't have scissors and knives and stuff out. And, you know, when you live in a house with a family, that can be sometimes kind of hard. If you were painting or doing some kind of project like that over the weekend, you're, it all has to be put away, out of reach. Um, and, of course, that makes sense. But it can also be hard because your house has to be clean and ready come Monday. You can't just, like, have a party and say, oh, I'll get to it cleaning up on Wednesday. Nope, it has to all be ready. Your house has to be picked up, clean, um, look presentable and everything when you are open. And that can be pretty difficult, especially like we've been working on our daughter's room and getting new furniture and trying to put that together. And I can't open the boxes or do anything till I know I for sure have time to set it up before the time I'm open again because I can't have stuff just like floating around that could be dangerous. So that is one drawback. Um, you do work around it, but it can be kind of annoying at times. 
The ninth drawback um, that may not be a drawback for everyone, but I have seen how it has affected my family is that not everyone in your family will always love what you do, um, especially your children. If you have young children or any children in your home, even teenagers, they may sometimes like your job, sometimes hate it. And that can be hard, especially if that was one of the main reasons why you got into this business is to support your family and to be there for them while also bringing in an income. Um, I know for my daughter, who's currently two, and I have one on the way as well at the filming of this video, um, she doesn't really know any different, but I can see a, a big difference in her between daycare hours and non-daycare hours. She definitely acts up a lot more during daycare hours, um, and I think she finds it a lot more peaceful when the kids are gone. Um, and I know as she gets older and we bring a new baby in, that may even be more affected. Maybe she'll love it more, but maybe she may have parts she doesn't like. Maybe there'll be a child she doesn't like. Maybe she's just sick of people being in her house. Um, and you know, when you have school age kids, it may be hard to have all these little kids running around in their home. And even your spouse, it may be hard. I know for my husband, San, he's super supportive, but I know it probably can get annoying when I get annoyed with him for like leaving a knife out or not putting stuff away, stuff like that, um, or just being in my way during the day, which, you know, it's his house. So it, it can be kind of hard when your house is your business and your family's still here. Um, but it also is a huge benefit. So I make sure, you know, as my daughter gets older, I will talk to her about why I am doing this and it's for her and for her, our family, you know, financially and just so that mommy can be doing something she really loves and can be here for you and stuff like that. But it can be hard to continue doing this if your family is not on board. And kind of piggybacking off of that, the 10th drawback is that it's very hard to have a work-life balance, which is kind of funny because that's what our channel is a lot about. Um, but it can be really hard to have a work-life balance when you work from your home. And that goes for all work-from-home jobs. When you don't have a separation, it's really easy to have no boundaries and to be working all the time. Or on the flip side, I'm sure for a child care provider, it could be really easy to feel like you should be doing all these homey things, but you have to cater to the kids. So it's this hard thing of finding the right balance between your work life and your home life, even when they kind of intersect. So I have worked really hard to have boundaries and to, you know, save all my work for during the work day, utilize nap time to get some stuff done for daycare. Um, and when the kids are playing, getting ready for the next day, like curriculum wise and stuff. But as a new provider, that was really hard for me. Um, and I was doing a lot of stuff at night and early morning and just feeling like I was never shutting off. And that's, it's really important to be a good provider to have times when you're not a provider, when you're just a mom or just a human being, um, because it, it's not healthy to be working all the time. And the little bonus drawback that I thought of is that little people are a lot of work and so are their parents. Um, I would be lying if I said every moment of every day is amazing and there's never any issues. Any parent or anyone who's been around small children knows that they can be difficult. Um, there's tantrums, there's throwing food, there's breaking things, there's, you know, lying, whining, all those things. I mean, they're not constant all day, um, but those are little things like every day where it can get a little annoying um, or hard to deal with and a provider has to make that decision. Is it too much to deal with or is it manageable and make a decision based off of that. But on top of that, a lot of what I've read and what I've learned and seen um, is that sometimes it's not just the kids that's hard to deal with. It's the parents and that's to be expected because you're caring for their precious little miracles who they created, who they love, um, and they're paying you to care for them. So they feel like they have a say, which they do to some extent. Um, but that can be hard sometimes. There can be conflict. It can be emotional at times, especially if you hate dealing with conflict um, and just making sure you're enforcing your policies, but also, you know, looking out what's best for the children and trying to make your families happy. It's, it's a hard balance sometimes. Um, there's not always a win-win situation. And that can be very difficult um, for a people pleaser and somebody who doesn't always think of that kind of part of it when you go into the business. And that was definitely something I knew about, um, but not something I was really prepared for totally because you never really know 
what's going to happen, what issues might crop up. You may be happy, but a parent may be unhappy with something. Um, and it could be something simple like you're not going to the park enough or um, your food's not the right amount of vegan or, you know, whatever it could be. Everybody has an opinion and it's impossible to make every single family happy 100% of the time because they all have different kids, different wants, different schedules. Um, so it's just learning to be okay with that and do the best you can and, you know, resolve conflicts when needed. And then if, if it's too much, then terminate care if that's something you have to do, which I guess is another difficult thing with this job is that you sometimes have to, you know, make the hard decision to terminate care. It's not always easy. Um, it's probably never easy, but, um, sometimes it's what's best for everyone. Um, but you usually have to initial initiate that. So those are my top 10 drawbacks of being a child care provider in your home with one bonus. I would love to know if you're a child care provider in your home, what are some drawbacks that I didn't think of, maybe big or small, and maybe some of the drawbacks I mentioned you don't agree with. If that's the case, please leave it in the comments. If you are new to child care, if you have any questions, if you're thinking about it or on the fence, let me know. I would love to help support you and answer any questions I can. Obviously, every child care is different. Every person is different. Every state, every country is different, but I will do the best I can to help support you guys. It means a lot to me to help, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys.